Our next speaker is Tanji. He's going to talk about another long-running um, student expedition that the Imperial um, put together. And again, the documentation, I know these guys are fantastic. So I'll hand over to Tanji. All right, thank you very much, um, Phil. So I'm going to talk about uh, the long-standing Imperial College expedition to the Hollow Mountain, or Migovets, in Slovenia. Um, this expedition has run in its current format since 1994, so it's been 23 years of uh, near-continuous exploration. Uh, so the talk is really going to be about just setting the scene uh, to telling you exactly where um, we have gone caving, um, give you a little bit of a history of exploration, but then focus mainly on the past two years um, of exploration, which um, has focused really in one particular area of the cave, so it makes sense to talk about that. Um, and then we'll look at the future objectives uh, for next year, as well as the foreseeable future. Um, so Slovenia, um, the Imperial College Caving Club has gone to the northwest corner of Slovenia in the Triglau National Park. So Slovenia is a rather small country. It's got a population of two million people, speak the national language Slovene, some of which is uh, flavored with Italian and German words in the northwest corner where we are. So it's uh, very much a little dialect, uh, and it's fun to talk with uh, the local community uh, and learn about those little differences between some of the Slovene that is spoken in Ljubljana, the capital, and some of it uh, which we pick up in, uh, in Tolmen. So Triglau Mountain is about... 2,800 meters elevation is also on the, there we go, it's on their national flag, it's an emblem, it's the mecca uh, for some of these, uh, for the Slovene people, so they think that every Slovene at heart should really climb that mountain once. Um, so... We travel to Tolmen. Tolmen is the um, town which is the admin centre for the municipality of Tolmen. It's found in a small glacial valley um, through which the river Socha runs. Um, if um, any of you know about the Socha front during the First World War, uh, there was a lot of fighting in order to get control of the bridges over the Socha. So it's very much steeped in history. Uh, it's really easy to access from uh, Ljubljana as well as from some of the Italian border countries, uh, border cities, sorry. Um, you can also, uh, in order to get, here, get there from the UK, you can try to interrail across Europe. Um, some of our members have tried that and enjoyed it, even though it takes a little bit of time. Um, but certainly you would take in the scenery uh, to get in this lovely, lovely town. Um, so we get to Tolmen using the, the Imperial College minibus, which generally turns out to be the most expendable minibus from the Union fleet. Um, and so fortunately it does tend to make it up to 924 metres elevation across some uh, fairly hairy hairpin roads. Um, this year in particular, we found out uh, halfway up the ascent that the um, engine coolant tank was capped with some aluminum foil and an elastic band. So we fixed that using a cable tie instead. Uh, well, we made it. Uh, so we carried all the crates to Tolminske Rauner, uh, which is a small hamlet, uh, and that's the end of the tarmac road. Um, so taking all the crates of equipment and food. We store them in a barn, uh, or did that until very recently. Uh, we've had some really good uh, relationships built up with the local farmers, um, which tend to be called the Scala family. Uh, but Scala means farmer, so they're really the farmer family. We also know their, their, their true surname is the Koblitzar, uh, and we're really thankful for them uh, letting us use their barn uh, to store the equipment for uh, four to five weeks. Um, so here at Rauner, 
it's time to sort out the equipment and prioritize what needs to be carried up first. Certainly not liqueurs. Um, so we bring up the equipment uh, and we porter it uh, for the last kilometer of ascent. So we need to go up Tolminski Migovets, the mountain of Tolmin in Slovene, uh, sits at 1,862 meters elevation. And behind that mountain uh, you, is the, what we call the plateau with the cave entrances. So that picture was taken in autumn and it really illustrates um, both the, the timber line, obviously, but also um, where the limestone really starts. Uh, and it's at Rauner, so we have a, a big stack of more than a kilometer th thickness of uh, thick, uh, thickly bedded Triassic uh, limestones. Um, so a little bit of the geography. I tend to think of our mountain as a, a sort of rectangular plateau, a kilometer wide and two kilometers long. Um, so on the, off to the west is a steep slope uh, down to the Tolmenka Valley. Over there, with the resurgences at around 780 meters um, elevation. And to the east is the um, Zadlaštica Valley, with a resurgence completely concreted, concreted over for a hydro scheme, um, which sits a little bit higher at about uh, 1,100 meters elevation. Uh, to the east of the plateau here uh, is a beheaded glacial valley um, with some potential entrances, uh, one of which has led to lots of discoveries. And over to the north, and that mountain here, Tolminski Cook, so is a ridge of mountains we called the ridge. Uh, it's about, sits about 200 meters higher than the plateau uh, and seems to... Um, well, be a sort of the plateau sits in the uh, sort of <coughs> precipitation shadow from um, most most of the most of the rain, and so we tend to see large clouds building up behind that ridge, which does give it a very ominous look. Um, further north, above that ridge, is more uh, limestone landscapes, uh, plateaus with some more entrances. Um, although the exploration for the past 23 years really has focused on the Migavets Plateau. Uh, so this is part of the Julian Alps. Um, the scenery is uh, very typical of what you'd expect for carbonate landscapes. Um, it's um, absolutely a pleasure to go hiking there. They've got lots of uh, hiking trails. They're glazed with that... Uh, red and white uh, little circle there. Um, as I said, steeped in historical heritage, there are Bronze Age remains, um, as well as the remains from the World War I Socha Front. Um, the mountain in the background, uh, Kern, had its uh, top blown off um, almost, well, more than a century, so it was October 1917. Uh, Either the Italians or the Austrians uh, did it. No one seems to want to own up to it. Um, yeah. Um, a little bit about the geology. So we've been exploring in Tolminski Migavets. So the pink limestones, which are the equivalent of the... Uh, so they're called the Dachstein limestones as well. Uh, they are part of the same carbonate platform that you see all over um, the, uh, the Eastern Alps, so Austria... As well as, as well as Slovenia. Um, so they're Triassic, uh, and from there you can see they're sitting on top of younger rocks, um, so that the greens and the blues are Cretaceous and Jurassic uh, limestone. So it's a very complex um, area uh, for a structural geologist um, to go there. Um, and most of the cave development has um, been confined so far to the Triassic limestones over the top, although, that's a small aside, in the uh, Cretaceous limestones further down towards Tolmin is what they call Dante's Cave, supposedly the cave that um, inspired Dante to write his Inferno. Uh, whether you believe that um, is another matter. But it's uh, certainly a, a, a kilometre-long cave in the Cretaceous limestones that sit uh, much, much further down the valley. 
So that's for the cave development potential in, in, in megavets. So we know where some of the resurgences are, um, and they, are, uh, they, they do give you a good um, depth potential of at least a, a kilometer, at least for the Zadlaštice Valley to the east of the plateau. Um, and there's plenty more area. Uh, so the picture on the right is what we called area N. So that's on the other side of the ridge I was talking about. Um, fewer, fewer entrances spotted and uh, even fewer explored um, because you'd have to um, access the mountain from another side and also it's not in the same uh, municipality. So the admin center is not in Tolmen anymore. Um, so would we be treading on anyone's toes? We don't know yet. However, there are plans to go and uh, do some more serious exploration in Area N, um, which uh, might yield more cave passage. Uh, so the exploration of Megavets started with a local club, the JSPDT, so the, uh, the caving section of the Alpine Club of Tolmen, um, which um, went uh, and started exploring the plateau since 1974, finding two major entrances, um, but then lacked the manpower to actually push them. So they pushed them to minus 540 meters, so getting one of the deepest uh, Slovenian caves at the time, um, but then put it on hold to go and explore another cave, uh, a resurgence called Maleboka, near the Canin Massif, uh, so it, was until, it wasn't until 1994, 1995, uh, Imperial um, took an interest in uh, that mountain and led some winter reconnaissance uh, missions uh, so in order to look for blowing holes. So obviously, just um, during the winter, the cave breathes out. Um, they're sort of warmer than outside air, um, and so a lot of those blowing holes were, uh, so the entrances were painted over, geolocated, uh, and people went back there during the summer to try and force their way into um, a master system. So a couple of them did yield some passage, but most of them turned out to be very, very small entrances indeed, um, and full of, um, of uh, choss. So we've got some good recent photo coverage to um, do a little bit more armchair caving during the 11 months that we're not in Slovenia. Uh, and thankfully, the um, um, Slovene government has um, updated their database uh, for the photo coverage, as well as the LiDAR database freely available for download to, um, to try and work out where some of the uh, cave development might go. So this is just really to illustrate um, the, how one could uh, potentially pick out entrances that no one's looked at before by comparing this to the uh, database that we have uh, until then. So it's called a plateau. Obviously, it's riddled with shake holes. It, that approximation doesn't hold to... Uh, any, any length scale uh, below 30 meters, really. So it's uh, full of valleys, hidden, hidden little valleys, hidden shake holes, which is all to the good because we have been given permission to camp on the grassy spots um, of that plateau, and they tend to be out of sight of the main hiking routes. But you would expect that after 20 years, we have started to make our own um, little trays, trails over the grass, and it's not uncommon to have a Sunday hiker um, take the wrong turn and emerge at the bivy uh, asking the way on. Um, so where are the caves that we know of so far? So this is a recent map um, after the 2017 expedition, summer expedition. We have a system, Migavets, of 39 kilometer long, which is the longest in Slovenia. It's become the longest in Slovenia since uh, 2012, actually, and a connection that made it uh, 25 kilometers long. And now a third system in brown, which is the Primadonna Monotip system, so in the, in the western sector of the plateau, has been connected through a long high-level passage in brown there to 
the main system. So the, the system is now is, is very nearly 40 kilometers, uh, kilometers long. And you'll see that there's about 41 kilometer total of cave in the mountain, which does mean that a lot of the exploration now, or as in we, we have reached that point where most of the big systems under the mountain have been connected. Uh, so um, we are now looking for the, the, the next big entrance that will lead to, to, to a next big cave, um, as well as extending that system. So over the past two years, we have been exploring the Prima Donna system, and that's what I'm going to talk about very quickly. Okay. Um, just... So that was just before the connection between Prima Donna and the main system. Um, we, uh, this is just to illustrate uh, how um, we've used some of the cervix data in conjunction with the surface morphology. Now, to be fair to the explorers who found a Coincidence Cave, they did not have that map here. Um, that was made afterwards, but it does highlight that Coincidence Cave is about 250 meters above the known end of the passage in the system. And it is also coinciding with this uh, rather large um, canyon feature on the side of the mountain. Now, underground, there are also signs that the cave passage uh, follows fault planes. Um, and whether the fault planes identified underground, which are not so very far from that major canyon, are the same fault, and whether coincidence might break into our system uh, remains to be seen. So it certainly does look uh, very likely. So what have we been doing uh, recently? Well, first of all, a little bit about uh, our exploration. Every expedition has their top camp or bivy. This is our centralized area where we store the kit, the food, where we congregate to discuss the plans, uh, congregate in the evenings as well to share stories of what happened during the day. Um, so, to, to, to cooking, no, 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 water collection. Okay, so in terms of water collection, um, there is no, the, the, yeah, the recharge is, is, through, uh, is through rainfall mainly. Uh, we also sometimes just dig out snow from a nearby shake hole, but that's a lot more effort. So we try to collect the water using tarpaulins, collect it in, we have at the moment, four 250-litre barrels, um, and that does last us a good two weeks with an expedition of 15 members um, without being too liberal with the use of water, obviously. Um, so that's quite good. Um, so the bivy is our home for the most of most of the expedition, uh, and obviously we camp uh, outside of the bivy uh, in our own individual tents. Um, so the bivy is, always looks like a place of safety, a nice refuge, uh, up until well this year where there was the incidence of um, lightning striking the bivy. Uh, so. A lot of people stayed there. So there were 11 cavers down in the bivy when it struck. Um, and they've all uh, written down their account uh, about what happened. A few other cavers were on the surface, uh, snugly in their tents. Uh, and they were nicely oblivious of what just had happened. So mountain life is a good life. Um, this is a very typical uh, Deep frying donuts is 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 a is a really good uh, food for going underground. You need the carbs and the fat uh, to um, to last underground. So when you have days when you're spending um, a couple thousand calories, or at least five or six thousand calories, going uh, caving, you will need that food uh, in order to explore successfully. Um, yes, uh, you can also enjoy a nice cup of beer in a cup of coffee at 10 in the morning on the way down to the town, and we burn pine cones in order to make tea. Very efficient use. Um, prepared for pushing, so pushing is just exploration of new passage, um, and yeah, we usually do that in the morning, uh, and 
Um, prepare to go down and find the entrances and go down. Uh, so this is the Migavet system. Uh, some of the horizontal levels that we've uh, explored so far. NCB passage in particular, uh, instrumental in all the connections between the three systems, really. Um, so over to the right-hand side here uh, is Prima Donna Cave um, and the branches we've explored uh, recently. Friendship Gallery, where we had a camp for uh, six years. Oh, that's a view. Sorry, I just have to skip this because... Current objectives, Prima Donna. This is colored by um, look, date. Uh, so in blues, you'll have the oldest explored passage. This was started by the Slovenians in the early 2000s. Uh, they explored down to minus 720 meters. Um, and no one's been back there yet, but that's uh, an objective for next year. In reds are the cave passage that we found over the last two years. So 2016, 2017, over 3.5 kilometers of, of new cave. Uh, we found our own different shaft series, um, as well as some horizontal passage connecting back into the old uh, Slovenian main route. Uh, what's different about Prima Donna is that you go down a 120 meter upsail, um, some of which is down a scree slope. Unfortunately, that's at the top, and then down uh, a, a, sh a sheer wall. Um, so extra care has to be taken in order not to dislodge too many rocks uh, going down. Uh, it's been the case that we've um, gone as individuals down the upsail rather than as a group to prevent any accidents. Um, so yeah, the, the Slovenians used to climb up the mountain to the entrance rather than upsail from it. Um, and here's a picture of the entrance, so big, big entrance. So what's the cave like? Uh, Prima Donna, the entrance pitches are formed along a fault, and the geologists among you will see those beautiful slick insides uh, next to the entrance pitch. It does mean, however, that one wall is uh, nice and solid, the other wall is very loose, and we've tried to, um, well, we have gardened, gardened it extensively over the, over the past two years, uh, but some loose rocks still remain. Uh, entrance series are now re-rigged to you know, Yorkshire standards, really, so beautiful white hangs everywhere, um, and it's a real joy to go down 18, 20 meter drops. Um, that makes them really friendly um, and really easy to get down to the uh, working end of the cave. So this year, a new branch was discovered that took quite a bit of water, actually. We, so we emerged and saw a, a, st a streamway by Migavet standards. So there's no, it's a very diffuse recharge in the mountain. So having um, that much water at a depth of 200, 300 meters is uh, fairly unusual. Uh, more unusual, unusual still is a series of perched sumps. Um, so three or four of them uh, within 50, within a, yeah, 50 meters of each other on the survey and within um, an elevation range of 10 meters. So if I go back, this streamway is actually downstream of where all those perched sumps were found over those two years. Um, so whether this is a geological horizon that somehow uh, created those sumps, and, but then we found a way to bypass them um, is still pretty cool. Um, but we've also found big pitches in our time. Uh, so we found pitches uh, about 40 meters deep each. Um, and so this was really one of the objectives of moving back into Prima Donna, which was to um, expand the skill set of some of the explorers. So I'd been on two expeditions before moving to Prima Donna, and I'd mainly gone down to camp and then gone along horizontal passage. Um, and so what we really wanted to do was get people, uh, give them the skills to actually push uh, an alpine cave and re-rig complete, completely uh, deep pitches, and so Prima Donna offered that. Uh, over two years, we've actually found another way back into the Hall of the Mountain King through another route, uh, dropping through the roof. Um, so yeah, plenty of pitches discovered. Sorry, that's, that's a little uh, plan. 
to show you a little bit of the um, of the, the new extensions that we've done. So upside, upside down chamber, possibly the second biggest in our system, which is about um, 60 meters long and 20 meters wide. Um, this year we've also found, or well, ended our exploration in chambers which uh, had completely collapsed with boulders this size that had, oh, you, we could see that they'd fallen down on an even bigger boulder, but that boulder had split in half under the weight. Um, so we turned around. Uh, there's also, this year there was a lot of um, progress in re-rigging some of the older um, bits of the cave. And one of the objectives was Galact Galactica Chamber, which was supposedly the biggest chamber in the system, although not many people had been there uh, and come back with photographs to testify about this. Um, so this is the pitch into Galactica. So what we're looking at here is actually this bit of the chamber. There's a massive wall of rock just here, and here is the uh, bigger chamber. Now, I was told uh, yesterday that actually the chamber is pretty boring. It takes you a long while to get from anywhere to anywhere, so I haven't bothered to put a photo. Um, so Galactica chamber over there. Um, but we also have some interesting uh, surface shafts which are plugged with snow and at the bottom they do also have ice deposits and now if people have been there to genus talk uh, at the moment ice caves form around 2,300 meters elevation this is at about 1,800 meters elevation so it is even more susceptible to uh, climate warming and indeed so earlier reports of this cave uh, included apparently some um, magnificent columns and stalagmites. Um, they've unfortunately almost all disappeared. Uh, if you want to know more about our expedition, you can visit our website, uh, go on this, either on the Slovenia uh, tab or look for the wiki uh, expedition information for novices. That's if you're interested in joining the expedition. Uh, looking to the future... Uh, we're looking again this year to camp on the mountain, uh, and we're possibly thinking of redoing an underground camp in Prima Donna to reach the deep stuff. Also keep an eye out for publication. So we are working on a new volume of The Hollow Mountain, which will give details about our exploration uh, between 2013 and 2017. So the most up to date. Thank you very much. Thanks very <clears throat> thanks for much, Tanji. Uh, again, fantastic expedition, pushing 1,000 metres. I'd be quite jealous. I'm quite jealous. That's both expeditions. Those both student expeditions doing over 1,000 metres. Great stuff. This is what we need to encourage. <clears throat>